Okay, welcome back. We're going to use this graph paper that you see in front of you to show you how to draw a proper scaled ray diagram for this particular question. Now the question says the concave mirror has a focal length of 2 meters and we're going to place an object 1.5 meters from the actual mirror itself. So our object distance is 1.5 meters, our focal length is positive 2 meters because it's a concave mirror with a real focal length. So I'll start by drawing my principal axis. That's always the first step. So I'll just make a line down the page. And then I'm going to add my concave mirror and talk about scaling on the diagram. Now I've got a little bit of experience with these questions, so I'm going to put my mirror over to the left, basically because I know what's going to happen when the object is inside the focal length. So sometimes it takes a little bit of trial and error and you might run out of space, but once you get the hang of this in a later tutorial, I'll tell you what to look for as to know whether or not the image is real or virtual or anything like that. So you see I've drawn my concave mirror so that the mirrored side is on the left-hand side of the page. So the mirror is facing to the left. Now what I want to do is determine a scale, and I'm going to use every four squares so that I use up most of the page. Every four squares on my diagram is going to represent one meter. So I'm going to put some dots down, and then we'll go from there. Since our mirror is silvered on this side, all the rays will actually be originating and reflecting onto this side. So this is our real side, and on this side is our virtual side. It um, doesn't really matter. All our distances are measured from the center of the mirror. So where the mirror meets the principal axis, all our distances are measured. And remember my scaling was every four squares was one meter. So we've got it set up. Next step is to draw in my object. Now my object will be at the 1.5 meter mark, which is right where my hand is, and I'm going to simply draw it as an arrow. So here we see our object. I've drawn it at the 1.5 meter mark which is halfway between our 1 and 2 meter real side of our mirror. We can draw at any height we like since it's all scaled according to our original diagram. So draw it big enough so that all our rays coming off it don't get all cluttered together. Now the next step is to draw in our rays and complete our ray diagram. So let's start by drawing a parallel ray. But before I begin, mathematically, we might as well do this perfectly, mathematically it's correct to assume the mirror is flat. So what you do is you draw a tangent line on the mirror, and this is where we're going to take our rays to, and then the rays are going to be reflected from this tangent line. So I'll draw this tangent line in green, and this is the line we're going to take all our rays to before they bounce. Okay, so there's my imaginary line. Now let's start with our first ray. Our first ray comes off the object, and we're going to focus on the tip of our arrow. We're going to try and locate where the tip of the image will be. So we're going to take all our rays from the tip of the arrow. We start with a parallel ray, and we know that any ray that's parallel to the mirror will bounce off the mirror and go through the focal point. So let's draw that ray now. So we see our first ray. Parallel bounces through our focal point. Now our second ray, because we're in between the focal point and the mirror, that second ray gets a little bit tricky. But what you want to do is start a ray in line with this focal point so that it strikes the mirror and then comes off parallel. I'll draw that ray now so you know what I mean. I would take my ruler and line it up with this focal point. The ray starts at the tip of my arrow, so notice I've dotted the line back here. The ray is not actually starting here, that's just giving me a reference where I've lined it up and the ray travels straight to our virtual green line that I've drawn, which can go as high as you like, and then bounces off parallel. Remember, anything associated with that focal point has to either end parallel or start parallel. Now, if you look at these two reflected rays, it's always the two reflected rays that have to cross to create an image. I've got one up top here where my hand is, and one down below here where my hand is. Those two rays, clearly from this diagram, are never going to cross. But if we stand on the left-hand side and look at the mirror, because our eye can't make out that reflection, it can't make out the fact that the ray is actually bending, our brain's going to interpret that image straight back. We're going to think that these rays are coming from a point behind the mirror where they actually converge. So we have a virtual image here, and all we've got to do is find out where the two reflected rays appear to originate from. So I'll draw those lines in now, and we'll have a look. 
So we can see I've taken my ruler and I've lined it up with my original reflected ray and dotted it back. Now it's important we dot it back because we know that's not the actual ray. The ray itself is bouncing off the mirror to the left. So this is our virtual ray. This is where the brain thinks the image is going to be. So if I dot it all the way back, it follows that parallel line where my hand is. Similarly, down below, our reflected ray went down through the focal point. I would dot that one back all the way, and we can see they cross right at this point, at the 6 meter mark. So our image is going to appear at the 6 meter mark, and it's going to be upright. That's the tip of our arrow. So the last thing now is to draw in that image. Okay, now we see I've drawn in my image. It's upright. It's much taller than the original object, so the magnification must be bigger than positive 1 since it's upright. Notice I've drawn it in as a dotted line to represent the fact that it's virtual. Anything that's not a real ray, we have to dot it in. And we can actually figure out roughly the magnification. So DI looks like is 6, and because it's a virtual image, it would be negative 6. It's on the virtual side of the mirror. And the height of our image is about four times bigger than the object. So our object was two units high. This is one, two, three, four times bigger than that, give or take. Now it's important to note that these uh, ray diagrams that we construct using a scale model, like we've done on the screen here, there's always room for error. These rays that I've drawn, if they don't precisely go through the focal point or don't land precisely flat when we're talking about parallel rays, they'll be off ever so slightly at the end. And of course, the further away that object is or the image is from the actual mirror, the bigger the error becomes by the time the rays actually cross. But if you make the diagram big enough, you should get a pretty solid estimate.